Hey guys, this is Dino Jalusic and you're watching CMS TV. Chris Aiken presents, and I, of course, am Chris Aiken. And if you were listening to me on the Classic Metal Show last week, you heard me singing this guy's praises for his album, Follow the Blind Man. It is a fantastic release. Uh, I recommend anybody that's a hard rock or metal fan checks it out. It is truly one of the best records of the year. And here to talk all about that and everything else that he's involved in, since he's involved in 8 million things, the one, the only, Mr. Dino Jalusic. Dino, how are you, man? Hey, man, what's up? Hey, uh, thank you so much for the invitation for the show, and I truly appreciate you loving the album. Um, it's a, I thought it, it's an easy album to listen to, but not many people agree with that, so <laughs> I stumble upon different opinion, and, uh, you know, but I'm really happy how it turned out. Yeah. Well, it, it is a great record, man. It's just a great, solid rock record. I don't know why people would have a hard time listening to it. what are they saying what are the reviews or whatever that you're that you're seeing saying that it's progressive or something because it's easy yeah. to me no uh you know what i'm one of those guys you get uh nine great reviews and one <laughs> average and i i just get easily depressed of course one bad review came from croatia because you can never win in your own country that's why i stopped working here and going more towards the u.s and when i got when i was appreciated by uh the scene in the u.s that's when croatia started getting more into into me which is such a typical thing with with this uh, small country mentality but um well it's it is kind of progressive i don't think it's too progressive i didn't want to do overdo it uh it's it's still to me uh modern hard rock meets metal kind of stuff but you also get like a ballady version of, of myself on it. And uh, yeah, I mean, this this record waited a long time to come out. So I'm really happy it's out finally. Sure. Well, let, let's dig back a little bit. Obviously, you know, for anybody that's followed along, um, the reason it took a long time to, to come out seems to have been the falling out with uh, Frontiers. And I don't want to get into all of that. I, you know, I, and I'm sure you don't either. But. Yeah. What I'm curious about is, was it, what changed after that? Once you, you know, you get loose from the record company and then you, you now you're on your own, you know, did it change how you looked at doing the business and how you doing the record and everything? Or did you just kind of, that piece was over and you carried on? Listen, man, when I, when I was free from the court, which I was, in my opinion, supposed to be free right away because so many things just were not logical. It, it was great to be free. I'm, I'm able to do whatever I want. There's nobody above me saying, hey, we don't want this song on the record. This song doesn't belong. Everything that I say belongs belongs on the record. Because, I mean, if Prince listened to anyone, he would never uh, write a cat catalog he wrote, you know, because there's a lot of stuff from Prince that, you know, when people say, hey, I, I love Prince, there's like 35 records and people know maybe 10 songs from Prince. There's right. so many things he, he left and it's, it's on people to like explore. Um, I'm really happy that I'm my own master and nobody can tell me what to do. 
I'm just gonna write a song. If I if I think the song is good enough, it's gonna end up on the album. Uh, I don't care about genre genres. Sure. Uh, it to me, the, a good song is always a good song. So yeah. Right on. What was this material meant to be? Like the follow up to the Animal Drive record. This was actually supposed to be the second Animal Drive album, but um, we threw out two songs. One was very southern uh starts with a slide guitar i'm singing like so it was kind of zach wildish and the second one was very funky it, it had a funky breakdown with brass sections and i thought maybe this is going to be too all over the place let me put these songs aside let me write two new songs so healer was already out i thought okay this is going to be on the record and then I wrote Acid Rain. I actually wrote it the same day as Healer. So I thought, let's put these two songs. I'm missing out on an up-tempo song <coughs> on a record, aside from Rain of Vultures and What I Want. And um, yeah, so I kind of felt like it was going to be more compact. Now I think those two songs would actually work on the record. It would be even more diverse. To me, I love diverse records. So yeah, I don't know. I sure. like it the way it is. Uh, I already have a lot of material for the next one. It's going to be different because this one was written in 2018, 19. So I was 26, 27. And um, now I'm going to be 32 very soon. And, and stuff has changed. In the meantime, I work with Michael Romeo, George Lynch, Derek Sherinian, Mike Portnoy, Virgil Donati, uh, with the Dead Daisies, with Whitesnake, with uh, so many different people. And just the my view has changed so uh it's going to be different sure yeah. talk, talk a little bit about joining white snake dino uh you know for a lot of people including myself a lot of us thought that you were coming in to almost spell david coverdale because your voice is very similar to him um was there any truth to that rumor and and i don't mean take over but i mean maybe enhance his vocals some or or did you really just come in to play keyboards well uh since there's no official statement on uh what's what everybody was guessing and i was i was actually hearing a lot of stories from the behind that i'm actually be, i'm actually brought in to replace him he never really officially asked me, but I heard from a very close person that he kind of was thinking about that. So uh, I don't want to say that it, it is like that because I heard it from a close person. So I don't want to state that. Uh, but to me, White Snake is David Coverdale, and I I would never want to take that spot. To be honest with you, I don't want to be a little. Uh, young guy that sounds great singing David Coverdale songs. I I am myself, and I, I want to do stuff myself. I want to do it with my own songs. I don't want to, you know. David Coverdale is wise again. That's if the band should end because he wants to retire, the band should end because he wants to retire. It, it shouldn't because this way you can find somebody to replace Steven Tyler, somebody to replace uh, Robert Plant, and the bands can just go on and on and on. I don't think that's the point, you know. Sure. And uh, yeah, I, I sang a lot, obviously, live. If you came to see White Think, you noticed, you could notice that. Um, I sang Slide It In half half with him, and I covered a lot of ground along with uh, Michele, the keyboard player. So there was a lot of work. It was a lot of work. And I enjoyed the tour. We had a great time with Foreigner in Europe, both bands that I love. And um, yeah, it was really cool. Sure. You know, it, you, you remind me of when I talked to Ronnie Romero, who said almost the same thing about <laughs> Rainbow and, and then again with Shanker, the same exact thing. Like, if you get into that becoming the guy that sings for another band, then people forget that you have your own talent. It kind of is. I mean, look, Adam Lambert has probably the best gig uh, any singer could have but uh have, when was the last time you heard somebody talking about adam lambert as a solo artist right since that happened no, and right to be quite to be quite fair with you adam lambert had a hit record back in 2009 called for your entertainment you know he had hits 
on radio, what do you want from me? And uh, the other, if I had you and time for miracles and then a movie, but now he's, he's doing queen. He's never going to be Freddie because Freddie's the original. Right. And it's, uh, it's, it's kind of a curse because I'll tell you, I got a couple of more calls to join even bigger bands than Whitesnake. And I said, no, I got a call two months ago for one of the biggest rock bands ever that have one of the biggest hits and that hold record for the most sold tickets in Chicago for something. I also got a call for a famous metal band and I, I didn't want to do it. I'd rather be less successful as myself than being a superstar by being, you know, second guy, sloppy second in the band. <laughs> right. Not, I just, you know, I'm a creative person. I'm not a guy you're going to hire to sing for you and just, Hey, I'm just going to sing whatever you give me. Even with Michael Romeo, he wrote stuff, but I, I had a lot of inputs in, in, uh, phrasing and changing melodies and giving, you know, Hey, let's try this. Let's try that. So sure. And, but Ron yeah. Romero sang for rainbow. So he experienced that. I, I, I didn't want to experience that. So, you know, mm -hmm. no, you're right. How, do, how, you. how do you go about challenging yourself as a music creator? Cause you obviously get all these offers to do different things and people hear you and relate your voice to a lot of other people. How do you challenge yourself to make music that is all your own? Well, uh, that's a good question. I don't know. I just, I have a lot of influences. I wish you could see my table. Like I have a little <laughs> statue of Eddie Van Halen here, Rob Halford, signed Brian May statue, Richard Sambora, King Diamond, Dio, Ellis Cooper, Ozzy. Uh, then I have Iron Maiden and Nelson Chains here. I have some more Dio and Michael Jackson back there. It's, it, I kind of get all these energies, you know, because I listen to a lot of different music. So, like, if you listen to the album, if you take, like, Acid Rain, I even did some, like, death growls on that song. Very kind of Lamb of God influenced. But then there's The Bitter End, more Elton John, Billy Joel side of myself. So, to me, it's, it just, I start writing, it takes me wherever it takes me, and I just go, go with the flow. Uh, as Ron Bumblefoot told me, when we were writing uh, an album together that's going to come out soon, I was like, man, I wrote like 10 lyrics. I can't find like any inspiration for the 11th song. He said, just go, go by the guts. Just whatever, feel, you know, just don't, don't overthink, just go by the guts. And the lyrics came instantly. So that's one of, that's one of the records that's going to come out soon. One of my secret bands. Uh, it's going to be a, uh, so there's a story that I'm still not allowed to talk about, but okay. there's there has been a band that kind of fell out. I'm not sure if you can hear me. Yeah, I hear you. There's been a lot of stories. There's been a lot of stories on Blebbermouth recently about some people coming back to their own bands and people falling out of those bands and what's going to happen with this band and that band. I'm kind of connected with all those stories, so you're gonna you're gonna see what's going to happen soon. Sure. Um, it's, it's quite interesting to be a part of like all of that because I'm a fan of all these people, but now I'm in a band with some of them and we have an album ready. Uh, the first teaser is going to come out in 12 days and the first single is coming out in January. It's going to be the new prog band, brand on the market. So, yeah, looking forward. A totally different approach of songwriting for that band um, in comparison to like Jalousy, because there's a lot of shouting, a lot of Meshuga influence, okay. a lot of Muse influence stuff. You know, like what when you follow the rhythm of, of like kick, and you know, sometimes you can't really sing on certain background. You gotta go with like more kind of percussive, semi singing, and I actually like that. It's like it's like Michael Jackson with less singing. Let's put it that way. Okay. That's how I put it in my head. So, yeah, the approach is totally different. You. Hopefully you like the album. Sure, definitely. Well, I'll tell you what, Dino, I do like this album, Follow the Blind Man. It's an excellent record, and I figure <laughs> what, what we'll do Thank right you. here is we'll take a little break here, and uh, we'll give people a taste of it. We'll give them a pay, uh, taste of um, Chaos Master, which you have a video for. Tell us a little bit about the video and about the song. Uh, well, actually, that song and the bitter end was supposed to be one song. And it was supposed to be like Chaos Master Part 1 and Part 2. But I love The Bitter End so much. And people love that song so much that I said, you know, I'm just going to cut these songs. And this is going to be two separate songs. 
Chaos Master is pretty much the explanation of myself, you know. I've been carrying a lot of chaos throughout the years, court cases and very turbulent career, um, achieving the impossible from being like a, like a, like a kid star to becoming one of uh, most in demand, like rock singers nowadays, which I'm truly grateful for. Sure. And just that song kind of, kind of came together as, as like the truth about myself. It's very Ellis and Chains kind of influenced as well, especially the chorus. And um, I don't know. I, I, I can't really tell you much because when I wrote that song, I was in a different mode. So I can't really tell you how that happened. I just know that I came and I was like, okay, I need a heavy riff. I need funky verses. I need a some sort of a bridge to get into the chorus. And then I, I want to wail a, a chorus that's going to be chromatic and melodic. It's going to be very kind of painful and sad. I want to talk about all the sadness that's inside me and like all the pain. And the song just came out. And... I, I said to myself, okay, it's going to be melodic, but the ending of the song has to be very Pantera. Right. Like Pantera ending with heavy riffs and me just going, you know, as heavy as possible. In the end, the outro melody sounds like one of the, uh, like a kind of like Suicide Note Part 1 from Pantera. Somebody told me, and I was like, oh, I, I didn't even notice that it's pretty much this, the same melody. Da -da 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 -da. So I thought, oh my God, so it, it, it was, you know, I just thought, okay, I need a melody that's going to be covering all those riffs. And it turned out to be like a little homage sure. for myself to Pantera, which I'm, which I'm a huge fan of. Absolutely. As you can see, here's a Pantera poster. <laughs> um, nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Chaos Master is a yeah, very groovy song. We love playing that song live. Absolutely. Well, let's play it right here for, for the people to get a taste of it. It is Chaos Master. It's uh, Jalusic from Follow the Blind Man right here on Chris Aiken Presents. Right back here on Chris Aiken Presents, that was Chaos Master, new music from Jalusic. Maybe not that new, but uh, new to us. New to us, yeah. not new to Dino. Um, again, the album is called Follow the Blind Man. It is out now. Go listen to it on your streaming places and buy it wherever you can actually buy it. And don't be cheap. Go ahead and buy something. And uh, Dino... Yeah, exactly. Well, Dino, I did want to ask you, since you mentioned about your career and coming up, you know as kind of a, a child prodigy into this industry. I wanted to ask you about somebody you know and I know and we're both friends with that is in the same boat, that being Mariah Formica. Uh, you know, oh, you're, yeah. you, it's her you, birthday. Yeah, yeah. It, she just turned, what, all the, the old age of, what, 23 or something. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, man, Mariah. Well, t <laughs> tell tell me a little bit about you know. I know you know her from TSO, and and you know she's an incredible talent. I say all the time that she might be the best man. pure vocalist out there today. Jesus Christ, man! You know, she's man. She's insane. Like th there's not. I can't really find words to express how much I love Mariah. She's like my little sister, and. Sure. Uh, well, she's actually preparing for 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 this year's TSO tour. I'm not gonna be in TSO this year. Okay. Uh, so good good luck to all my TSO people. I'm doing the voice in Croatia this year as a judge. Right. So I stayed home. But man, Mariah, what a voice! When she joined TSO, we were so happy. She's like Ann Wilson and Aretha Franklin combined. I, I mean, you know what? Let, I, I want to stop with comparisons. She's Mariah, and she right. kicks ass and is amazing. And Plush is doing well, and 
she actually asked me if I want to record something with her back in COVID days. And I said, I would love to record something with you. I'm just not into covers anymore. I want to put out my own music. Uh, but And then she said, you, you know, we might, we might do something together, like as far as original stuff. And I said, hell yes. So <laughs> I want to see where, where, where those things are at now. But Mariah is amazing. And I love Plush. I love Mariah. And I hope... You know, she gets all the fame she deserves with uh, with her band. Sure. Do you see the comparisons between you to her, not musically, but as people that have come up in a tough business when you were very young, probably too young to understand it? I actually see a lot of comparisons musically because we both, like, when we talk, it, it's like talking to myself. You know, we talk about funk, she gets it. We talk mm -hmm. about corn. We talk about like metal or pop or, or whatever. And it's like, it's, it's the same opinion. It's the same attitude. So musically it's, it's totally like, uh, it's insane. I, I love everything about her. She, she understands at, at, at the age of like 22, 23, I don't know how old is she now, but, um, she understands. And well, growing up, especially in Croatia, uh, with this kind of music was tough. I'll tell you that it's, sure. uh, People still see me as like a kind of a, oh yeah, he's he's playing that rock music, you know. It's mm -hmm. it's not something that's mainstream here. It's like oh, one of those guys that's playing that kind of music, you know, which is kind of insulting because all the crap that's been played here is normal. So, you know, it, it it's been tough, but to be honest with you, I I really don't care anymore because, I mean, it's been tough. Uh, I came to a point where I, I can do whatever I want and things are opening up to a certain extent and it's crazy. The calls that I'm getting are insane and I'm all over the place. But the thing is, I'm not in 8,000 bands, as you mentioned before. Mm -hmm. uh, I was uh, When I was on court uh, with Frontiers, I did Whitesnake as a live member and I did The Dead Daisies as a fill-in. TSO... I. I used to tour with TSO, but right. my only real band is this one. It, it's the original stuff. Now I'm going to have two original bands. Everything else is going to be ju just a guest appearance. So I don't consider that a band unless there's songwriting behind it and there's tours, there's touring like behind it. So sure. Yeah. Well, you're mentioning touring. Yeah. What what is the touring plan for Follow the Blind Man, or is there one? you know versus putting out another record that that's more fresh to you and then touring you know what uh well it's fresh for people so who am i to ask so uh <laughs> listen we, we we just sold out our hometown and as soon as we sold out the venue the the boss of the venue called me and he said listen this is crazy there's so many people wanting tickets that you could have sold another one or even three in a row Wow. But they didn't have any they didn't have any free dates because everything was booked. So I couldn't so it was sold out. It was crazy, packed, everybody singing along, which is crazy. Because you know, this is not a pop concert. It, to me it was surreal, to be honest with you. And I'm grateful it happened that way. Um so we're gonna play with we're gonna play together with the Dead Daisies in Ljubljana, Slovenia. Okay. Uh which is we're gonna play a three thousand capacity place, which is for a first album, crazy good especially for this type of music, in my opinion. Sure. Then we're going to play Switzerland. Then we're going to play Slovenia. And then it's the end of the year. Next year, we have pretty much, we have everything except America uh, to to tour for the album. We have, we just booked <laughs> something really big and cool with another big artist. I'm not allowed to say it yet, but it's sure. it's, it's not going to be in Europe. It's, it, we're probably going to play asia as well and south america and hopefully we get to come to the u.s right on man are you do you so like playing are... do you like playing the big festivals and stuff like that or is that would you rather play smaller stuff but be able to headline with your own music no i love both i love both i mean big festivals are cool because you have a lot of space to like uh you have a lot of space for for like stage moves and stuff but uh, there's something about like smaller clubs. It's more intimate. You you, you feel the energy more if, if people are closer. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, certainly. You know, man. arenas are arenas are kind of weird to be honest with you because people are like, it's amazing, but people are so far in the back that it's just 
at certain point when I when I used to tour with TSO, I stopped uh, realizing that I'm playing arenas because you know there's people far in the back, <coughs> and it's you don't really get to experience that energy when people are closer to you. I kind of get everyone. So, but I love listen. I love playing everything. Sure, I don't care. I love playing for people and I love performing. That's 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 my life and that's what I was born for. So. That's my goal in life. That's 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 the to me that's the meaning of life. Or the meaning of my life is to play and potentially inspire and make people happy. I think that's what I'm here for. Sure. You know, I, I've always been curious about TSO, uh, Dino. With it, it's the one. Pro- obviously, it's massive, and I've seen it personally. I've seen it eight nine times. I mean, it's a it's an incredible show. It really is. But the one thing that I always wonder about for you guys, for the musicians, is it's it's a show that kind of eliminates you guys' personalities, meaning it's all about the show. It's not about you or Jeff Scott Soto or Chris Caffery, you know. For for you, do you like being kind of an anonymous player in that big thing that's TSO? Uh, listen, that's, that's how I started. That's how I, uh, that's how I found my way t- up to here. And I'll never forget when I joined TSO, one of the singers told me, Hey, if you think this is going to make it famous, you're wrong. And I thought to myself, no, I'm actually going to find a way to be with TSO, but f- kind of get the contacts and kind of, exp- you know, you know, get, get more exposure and then do my own thing with my music. I kind of achieved that during COVID. Um, during lockdown, doing all the videos and collaborations. But to be honest with you, TSO is a team effort. It's a, it's a show, and I'm a team player. And I think success is is impossible without a great team. And you can't do and you can't do it all yourself. You know, I I do front my own band. I do write the songs. But these three guys behind me playing are monsters. And this show would not be that show without the whole chain. So that's the thing with TSO as well. TSO is just 10 singers, 10 players. And if there was one singer, that would not be TSO. TSO is special because of that. And I love being in TSO. I love touring with TSO. Uh, I loved uh, watching other singers. I think I I became a better frontman watching all these guys, you know, watching Jeff Scott Soto, you know, and and Chloe and Russ and all all those people. It's, I don't know. I was 23 when I joined, so... Are you thinking that you'll go back to it at some point, or are you moving on from it? I actually, I, I'm actually going to miss TSO this year because I got used to it. I got used to Omaha hanging out with all those people, going to like city shops and buying all these little figures and CDs, and uh, you know, tour bus fun with Jeff and all these guys. Uh, but the thing is, there's so many things that that are happening right now. Um, it's 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 just gonna be a matter of my decision. Uh, but I would, I love TSO. It, it was my start. If if I'm free, November December, I would love to tour, and you know see all those friends from the U.S. that I I don't get to see very often. So I'll, I'm always open for TSO. That's it's 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 not even a question. Right on. Well, Dino, let me pull it back to um to Jalusic to uh follow the blind man and and the new music that you're already started working on for you. How do you identify what is useful? Like I, I know a lot of band guys and a lot of them have a phone full of ideas. You know, a lot of them write things down or they pick up the phone at three in the morning and they're like, la, 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 you know, whatever they think of. How do you go about identifying what is a useful idea versus something that, you know, might have felt good in the moment, but then you just throw it away. Or do you keep them all? So I have a phone full of ideas, to be honest okay. with you. Like this today, I was listening to some. I was sitting. I'm like, oh my god. But but the thing is, the way that I write stuff is like, okay, so this is the melody, but underneath is gonna be. It's going to be C sharp into B into E into F, and there's going to be a drum roll going into a verse. That's how I think, because 
I write I write stuff in my head and I can hear the riffs, I can hear the production, I can hear all the little details. And then I go and I just I demo the drums, I demo the keyboards, I demo the guitar, I send it to my guys. I'm like, okay, so this is the idea, let's develop this. That's how I work. But I play I play a lot of instruments. So in my mind I can I can see the position, I can see the notes, and that's how I write. I I, I there's a lot of singers that are great singers, but they're like I needed somebody to write with me because I can't develop the idea. I do it all myself. But if I'm stuck, which can happen, I send it to my guitar player and I'm like, hey, can you rewrite this riff? I can like I cannot stand this riff. I wrote it, but I need a guitar player to rewrite this. And and I don't know how to get out of this verse. Can you do something so we can get out of this verse into this chorus? We have a strong verse and a strong chorus, and but the in-between stuff that's probably the weakest part of, of of me writing i i have a great idea for the verse and the chorus and i'm like oh how am i gonna get into this without stopping you know and then i do like something crazy some people say wow this is genius some people say wow this is like a fist in your face so <laughs> different folks different strokes you know right. um but um yeah I, I have different ways of writing if i write on acoustic guitar it's gonna be different than writing on piano but uh, if, if I pick up the seventh string, it's going to be different than, you know, something else. But I have a different ways of, of approaching how to write songs. It, it's also also like when it's a prog project, they say, hey, we want to go, you know, I hear a, a prog background and I'm like, OK, this is very proggy. So my vocals need to straighten things up and make it more listenable because, you know, as as my friend, a famous keyboard player would say, this album without Dino's vocals and melodies, we would be just a just a baked potato band jamming. But with <laughs> right. Dino's voice on it, it's it, it's it's a solid prog band. So vocals do make the difference because if you have a background that's just too proggy, too wacky, and people can't find any hooks, uh, yeah. it might not come to 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 people's hearts. So, but it, it sometimes it's really hard to write a melody over that kind of background. Right. But it's 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 a it's it's a challenge, and I love that. I'd rather write stuff on top of that than on top of like very simple rock and roll ACDC kind of stuff, which right. I of course love. But it's 2023, so <laughs> right, certainly, man. You well, know. Dino, you have a lot of stuff coming up. Uh, where should we tell people to go to keep up with you and all these different projects and stuff? For social media, or do you have a website, or what? <coughs> I do have a website, dinojalistic.com, but if you follow me on Instagram or um, or YouTube and Facebook, I always post news, and you you can find everything uh, about it there. I'm, I'm always going to post the tour dates and uh, if there's going to be a new new band up, uh, if there's going to be a new record coming out. I'm telling you now, there's going to be another record coming out in March, and uh, then I have to start like really laying down ideas for the new Jalusic, uh and we have to record everything by uh, by early fall, so it comes out like it's gonna come around this time next year. So okay. I really have to like put all the ideas together. I think we're gonna have some some cool guests on the album because one of the songs is co-written with with Bumblefoot. Um, so I have to see. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Very There's good. Be some cool stuff. I'm telling you. Sure. Well, uh, one more time. The, the yeah. current album is Follow the Blind Man. It is out now. It is Jalusic. And Dino, I thought we would end with the uh, video for The Great Divide to wrap this up. So uh, tell us a little bit about the song. The Great Divide is the song that I almost kicked out of the album. Okay. Uh, which is quite insane. Now now that I listen to it, I'm thinking, wow, what was, what was going on with me? Um, that song touched a lot of a lot of hearts i'll tell you that because a lot of people have, like send me a message and i thought the thing is the thing about like love songs or songs that are ballads is like it's either you either hit the spot or it can be very cheesy and i thought to myself ah i might be going into you know with with songs like died and animal inside which is heavy modern with prog stuff in it with like pantera stuff in it and it's it, it's dark lyrics it's uh you know your face stuff i thought oh maybe the great divide is 
kind of going too much into, um, I don't know, Aerosmith, Whitesnake, Bon Jovi territory. But then I recorded the vocals for the song, and my bass player came in, and he's like, dude, he, he got chills. And I thought, okay, let's let's uh, let me change the let me change the way of thinking. So instead of putting uh, "Diet" as a single and "Follow the Blind let's go with "Fly High" and "The Great Divide," two songs that we, we, we didn't even think about going with. In the end, "Fly High" turned out to be the hit, sure. and "The Great Divide" turned out to be the ballad of the album. So I wrote that song back when I was still in a relationship. Um, and I felt like it was, it was, uh, I didn't know if the end was near, but I felt like the great divide was between us. But it's also a song that people can um, relate to, not only talking about like past uh, relationships, it can be about, you know, people that, that, that passed away. And uh, I, I changed a couple of lines compared to the original version. And I love those lines a lot more. The, I know you're. I know you're coming home is the new line in the song, and um, I'm I'm really happy how that song turned out. I love singing that song live. It, it really gets me. I get very emotional singing that song live. Yeah, very very good. So. Well, let's play it right now for the people. This is the Great Divide. It is Jalusic from follow the blind man and Dino. Uh, thanks once again for joining me here on Chris Aker presents. Mm -hmm. 